Greetings and salutations friends and welcome back to more Warhammer lore. Today we are going to be talking about the Wood Elves, more specifically the Glade Guard and how the Forest of Athalorn defends itself. As you can probably imagine, the Forest of Athalorn not being a particularly large place and, you know, being a forest, meaning there's not a whole lot of fucking farmland in there and it naturally is somewhat limited in how many people, or well, faggot elves in this case, it can possibly sustain. It should be pretty damn simple pickings for the various major powers that surround them. The dwarves have several holdings in the mountains next to the forest. Bretonia is a considerable power in and of itself, although, well, trying to maneuver a horse through a bramble patch is problematic at the best of times, but still. There is no shortage of fire or axes or peasants to wield both of them in Bretonia, so it's not really that big of an issue. And of course, not that far away, lies the Empire, which is probably the best bet for anyone trying to take over Athelorn, seeing as they have what can best be described as a fetishized love-hate relationship with things that go boom and create a lot of fire in doing so. The forest also frequently suffers from a rather considerable beastman infestation, as they too are very, very fond of woods. For completely different reasons than the wood elves, granted, but still a tree is a tree, and whether you hug it or try to hump it to death is not really that big of a difference once you get down to it. And the beastmen are not the only bad guys that would very much so like to get their hands on Athaloran. The Skaven have on several occasions poked their furry little noses in there because, well, it's a fairly magical place and the Skaven are quite fond of magic. Granted, they prefer it to be a solid substance in the form of warpstone, but still, you can never completely ignore the potential of magic. It does have a very pleasing habit of going boom very loudly, and it is also, occasionally at the very least, remarkably unreliable, which is something that makes the Skaven feel right at home. And of course, then there's the undead. You see, the Wood Elves have come up with a rather stupid solution. They figured that a lot of people that they didn't really want to have wandering into their forest kept wandering into their forest, so they needed something like a welcome mat, except a fuck off mat in particular. And well, just killing everyone who entered didn't really work out, people kept entering because humans are funny like that. We just kind of want to keep exploring, no matter how many of our fellow little primates get shot by arrows doing so. So they figured that instead of hanging a sign, just like, visitors not welcome, they started to build these wonderful little cairns out of the bones of the vanquished. This is essentially a massive fuck-off rock inscribed with magic runes. Underneath this rock is buried the bones of the would-be invaders of Athaloran. As you can already imagine, a massive goddamn gravestone with tons of dead things underneath it does send a fairly clear message. The only problem is, of course, that there are people in the Warhammer world that are very, very, very fond of massive amounts of corpses all gathered together in one convenient location. Necromancers, for example. Now, technically speaking, the wards on the cairn itself should be enough to keep any would-be necromancer away from the rocks. That is, assuming it is just a necromancer. If he brings friends, odds are they can tip over the rock and get at all of the delicious dead people underneath. If this happens, an undead invasion can get out of hand really, really quickly. And to be honest, the most surprising thing about it is that this ludicrously backwards defense strategy has only bitten the elves in their collective asses twice. Granted, on both of those occasions, Athelorn was almost turned into a realm of the dead and the dying, but hey, minor fucking details, and we're certainly not taking down our signs just because the entirety of the forest was almost turned into a boneyard on two separate occasions. After all, you know what they say, third time's a charm. But of course, despite all evidence to the contrary, the Wood Elves are not complete idiots. They do understand that these warning, or in the case of necromancers, welcome mats, do tend to attract some unsavory attention, not just from necromancers, but from the wide variety of Warhammer creatures that are very, very fond of bones and occasionally rotting corpses. Chaos Demons, for example, are quite happy with this place, except for the Cairns. This is the main problem again. The Force of Athalorn would be absolutely teeming with Chaos Demons, and in a way, it kind of is already, but hey. 
The cairns, however, do act as a fairly powerful deterrent against them, and as an additional bonus, not only do they work against demons and done dead, they also fuck with the Skaven. It's actually quite interesting. The Skavens have tunnels going through the entirety of the Old World, except for Athel Loran. The Skavens cannot seem to tunnel beneath the forest. Every time they try, various roots are going to be sprouting out of the tunnel's walls and thrashing the Skaven slaves to death, the tunnels will just randomly collapse, or indeed the tree roots will simply just squeeze down upon the tunnels, collapsing them. And any attempts to use magic or pretty much anything else to dig the tunnels have so far been completely futile. The gargantuan digging beasts of Clan Mulder can't really get anything done because they keep getting strangled to death, much like the Skaven slaves, and the innovations of Clan Scryer, well, they work on Warpstone, and the Cairns pretty much annul Warpstone magic, which pretty much means that the gigantic and extremely expensive digging machine is at this point little else than a Fiat Punto trying to get up a steep hill. Progress, simply put, cannot be made. This is where the Glade Guards come in, and indeed also the Way Watchers, and the bands of Wild Riders. The Wild Riders patrol the outer areas, essentially trying to run down anyone trying to mess with the statues and acting like a bit of a rapid response force. The Way Watchers locate the enemy, and then either send in the Wild Riders, or if the enemy is of a considerable size, then they mobilize the Glade Guard. Every single elf living in Athalorn is a member of the Glaive Guard. After all, like I mentioned, there's not a whole lot of tillable land in the forest, and there's not that many elves, simply because the forest can't actually sustain that many elves. As such, it is vital that anyone who lives in the forest is capable of defending it. Especially, as previously mentioned, the forest has a nasty habit of attracting all manners of monsters, not to mention the simple fact that a lot of forest creatures are monsters in and of themselves. Even the usually, quote-unquote, friendly dryads and treemen can be driven insane by the forest's rather unreasonable magical energies. Due to these somewhat precarious living conditions, every single elf is taught how to use a bow from a very, very young age. And considering that elves live a hell of a lot longer than us humans, that young age can be quite a while. Meaning that when an elf comes off age, they're already pretty goddamn good at their chosen weapon. In addition comes, of course, the fact that elves have a hell of a lot better eyesight than humans. They also think a hell of a lot faster than us. Not quite to the extent, mind you, of Eldar Contra humans in 40k, but still, a basic elf is going to be way, way smarter and capable of thinking way faster than a human. And this isn't, you know, book learning or anything. Their brains are simply better than ours, capable of working considerably faster. This, of course, is extremely helpful in a weapon like a bow, which uses fairly complicated ballistics when you're considering the fact that they're going to be shooting at fairly extreme ranges in a forest. It's a hell of a lot harder than it sounds. Hell, you can try it yourself. Grab a bow, if you for some reason have one, wander out into the forest, and try to hit a target 300 meters away. Hell, even just try to find a direct line of sight to a target 300 meters away, without obstructing trees, branches, bushes, etc. It's pretty fucking complicated. To make a long story short, let's just leave it at elves are pretty good with bows, shall we? Now, the Glade Guards, once they become proper Glade Guards, are integrated into various guilds, or families to be more precise. Extended families, granted, but they're essentially familiar groups that have responsibilities for certain segments of the forest. This, of course, means that they have to patrol various areas of the forest within their area of control and keep them safe from intruders. After all, not all invaders come in a massive steaming horde of shitting and burping beastmen or orcs. In fact, quite a lot of invaders, in the form of, for example, necromancers and skavens, come in individuals, trying to sabotage the cairn stones, or perhaps even trying to poison the forest directly. It is important to remember, once again, the elves draw their strength from the forest. They are... 
semi-magical beings at this point. If you kill the forest without hurting a single wood elf, the wood elves will themselves die. As such, the health of the forest is at their utmost concern. Naturally, however, Guard duty is not their only responsibility. The Clay Guards will also make up the main force that will oppose any invasion, and in doing so, they are also the closest thing that Athelorn has to a standing professional army. Now, I would be hesitant to use the term standing professional army, despite the fact that it is, in most cases, a standing and indeed professional army, but it is far too irregular to really be named as such. They are ruled by local chieftains and smaller groups, essentially operating in individualistic scout squads and smaller formations, rather than an army per se, but I wouldn't hold it against you if you used the term. And this is partially due to a highly individualistic streak amongst the Glade Guards. You see, while they are all, of course, expected to follow the general orders of their commanders, the orders are left up to the individual officers themselves, if you can give them such a name, perhaps the individual family leaders would be more correct, to carry them out and to interpret the orders to some degree. For example, a elf noble is expected to give a very, very general order along the lines of take that hill or hold this patch of forest, and it is then up to the individual family leaders to actually figure out how to do this. But not only that, they are also expected to take decisions that might have strategic, not only tactical significance. In fact, if one of these family groups decide to leave their post because they are of the opinion that their forces would be better used somewhere else, that is technically within their power. Now, granted, again, most elves are pretty damn intelligent, and they have been doing this for quite a while. As such, it's fairly rare for them to make a proper tactical blunder, and additionally, their commanding nobles will also have been doing this for a very, very long time, and have garnered themselves a fair bit of respect amongst their troops, so complete and utter disobedience is exceptionally rare, but technically it could happen, and it could also have some uncomfortable consequences. Seeing as, of course, the Wood Elves are primarily skirmish fighters, there is nothing stopping a unit of Wood Elves from simply just retreating from the enemy if they decide that they simply cannot fight them in the spot that their commanders told them to. This, of course, makes it very, very important that the Noble in Command actually gets told of this, otherwise shit is about to fucking hit the fan. But then again, as long as the Wynels are fighting on familiar ground inside the Forest of Athelorn, there is very, very little in the way of chance that any runner or communications personnel will be intercepted by pretty much any enemy. Catching a wood elf in the forest of Athelorn, where the very woods itself will be working against you, is virtually impossible. And in all due honesty, the benefits of such a flexible command structure on the lower levels far outweighs pretty much any potential deficits in it. And hell, in this case, we have an actual real-world example. Look at the German army of World War II. The Germans were not simply better soldiers than the people they were fighting. They weren't that much better trained, although, yes, they were better trained, but that's not so much that the Germans had a better training regime as everyone else had a fucking god-awful training regime. The reason why the German army and the German panzers managed to defeat enemies like the French, who outnumbered them, and in most cases, when it comes to tanks, vastly outperformed them. The French Lorraines were overwhelmingly superior to the Panzer IIs, which made up most of the German Panzer Force at the time. The reason why they won is because they had a flexible command structure, allowing their troops to maneuver into advantageous position, engage the enemy on their terms, and avoid the enemy on their terms. This allowed them to outflank and outmaneuver the French again and again and again, and this is exactly what the Wood Elves want. They are happy to let an enemy force penetrate fairly deeply into the forest of Athelorn, as long as this allows them to attack them from multiple sides, retreating, and then continuing to hit them. 
Because again, the last things the Wood Elves want is a pitched battle. They simply don't do very well in open, straight-up fights, and they only engage in them if it is the absolute last possible option. Indeed, you could even argue that the Wild Hunt, the particular phenomenon where Orion blows his fabulous little horn and calls all of the elves, all of the creatures of the forest, and pretty much all of the trees as well, to attack the enemy in one massive frenzied horde, has less in common with a pitched battle and more in common with a gargantuan ambush aimed at quickly overrunning the enemy, thereby ending the battle phase and beginning the Wild Hunt. Essentially, the part of the battle where the enemy is disorganized and running away, and the elves get to shoot him in the back without getting stabbed in return. This is not to say that they are incapable of pitched battles, however. The Glade Guards have, in fact, fought alongside Bretonia on a handful of occasions during their. Psh, alliance of sorts? To be honest, calling the agreement between Bretonia and Athalorn an alliance is stretching the term to breaking point, but if one is about to fall, then the other is, at least to some extent, obliged to help. Not so much because they are genuinely worried about the safety of their allies, but simply because they are fully aware that when whatever enemy is fucking their allies is done fucking their allies to death, they're probably going to be pointing their spiky penises towards Athaloran next. That aside though, let me backtrack for a moment, because I mentioned the Wild Hunt being not really a pitched battle, and again, being a bit of a uh, last resort. Here's the thing. In an ideal scenario, an intruder will be driven off by the Waywashers, maybe a raiding party of wild riders, skirmishes essentially, warning people away. The Bretonians haven't been stupid enough to enter the forest of Athalorn for a very long time, the dwarves still occasionally fumble in there, but, well, there's not really that much of value in the forest of Athalorn. There are no lost dwarf keeps or rumoured piles of gold in there. There are a whole lot of grudges, however. There are plenty of reasons for a vengeful dwarf to wander into the forest, but again, vengeful, not suicidal. A dwarven expedition into the forest of Athalora needs to be a considerable one indeed, seeing as the dwarves are not exactly, well, shall we say, well suited for guerrilla warfare? In other words, most civilized races avoid the forest of Athalora because of the potential of spiky death. So in most cases, the threat will be something uncivilized. Orcs maybe, beastmen certainly, that happens all the time, maybe on the undead, perhaps an incursion of Skaven, stuff like that. Generally speaking, these will be small bands, because to get to Athlorn, they either have to cross Dwarf territory or Bretonian territory. This is almost certainly going to thin the herd quite considerably, however, on the occasion that a larger enemy force makes its way into Athalorn, or indeed a larger enemy force is raised within the bounds of Athalorn, in the case of certain necromancers, they will begin to try and pick apart the enemy force. Again, this is primarily the way Watchers and the Wild Riders conducting hit-and-run strikes against any part of the enemy army that might be considered vulnerable. Supply trains, logistical tents, minor gathering of scouts, stuff like that. Once this strategy eventually fails due to the size of the enemy army, or well, succeeds, in which case you don't really need to go further, then the Glade Guards get involved in the fighting. And so now we move from a skirmishing phase to an direct engagement phase, where large numbers of Glade Guards engage preferably smaller numbers of enemies, using their knowledge of the woods to make sure that they always have a local superiority. They will attack them with long-range weapons, bows, etc., and, best case scenario, annihilate them with ranged firepower. If not, they wish to draw them deeper inside of their trap, so that wild riders, dried and treemen, can close the trap around them and annihilate the enemy force. If this strategy is also found to not be quite enough to stop the enemy, 
then they will maybe engage in a full-on pitched battle where large numbers of Glade Guards will directly engage the main force of the enemy, hoping to carry out much the same strategy, alternatively crushing them in a straight-up battle using their heavier troops. Again, this is not a preferred strategy because losses are almost certainly going to be considerable, both amongst the Fey defenders of Athalor and the Treemen and the Dryads, and amongst the Elves. If this also does not work, the Elves have one last trump card, and that is the Wild Hunt. The Master of the Forest, Orion, their king, which is essentially an embodiment of the Elf God of the Hunt, will call pretty much every single thing that creeps, crawls, and slithers in the forest, along with pretty much all of the treemen, and any and all elves he can get his hands on, and organize them all, or, well, organize is a strong word for this, into a massive, straight-up knockout attack, the aim of which is to shatter the enemy's resistance. This is the Wild Hunt, where the entire survival of Athalorn and its people is all bet on one last shock assault. Now, granted, it is a very, very effective shock assault, as the entirety of the woods will come alive around the invader, and all close in upon them at once in a screaming, crashing horde of treemen, elves, monsters, hunting dogs, and anything else that can bite an enemy. This strategy, if you can call it that, goes hand in hand with the earlier elf strategies. It's all about force preservation. They wish to inflict maximum damage upon the enemy with minimum of losses in return, willing to give considerable amount of land in doing so, and then, if this cannot stop the enemy, they will gather all of the forces they have so far preserved and smash them apart in one last hammer blow. The problem with this strategy is that it has to be led by Orion himself. Otherwise, well, it would just be the elves and whatever treeman allies they can gather. And here's the real catch. Orion is an embodiment of the forest of Athalorn, which means he is at his strongest during spring and summer. But during autumn, he is considerably weakened as the forest goes into hibernation. And during the winter, Orion and Ariel are both entombed inside the Oak of Ages. Until spring, which of course leaves him completely and utterly unable to aid his people. Luckily for the Wood Elves, there are very, very few races in the Warhammer world that actively campaign during winter. The Undead is one of them, and the Orcs are another, which eventually led to the Winter of Woe, which almost ended the Wood Elf race. Luckily for the pointy-eared little freaks, however, there are very, very few such events in Wood Elf history. In fact, Wood Elf history, compared to most of Warhammer history, has been remarkably peaceful. Mostly because, well, it is an evil forest that keeps killing anyone who enters it, which does tend to be a fairly good incentive for other races to stay the fuck out. Granted, the forest occasionally lashes out against its would-be protectors as well. And indeed, there is a subset of the Glade Gods known as the Deepwood Scouts, who are tasked with patrolling the dark and nasty parts of the forests. The parts where the Dryads and the Treemen are not friendly to the Wood Elves in the slightest, and in fact, just generally hates anything that isn't a tree and tries to tear it limb from limb. A rather uncomfortable place at the best of times, frankly. And I think I'll just about wrap it up there. You know, this video has made me want to do a full-on tactics and strategy videos for the various races in Warhammer again, because originally this was just supposed to be a fairly quick video about the Glade Guard, but as I was writing that episode, I figured, you know what, let's go a little bit more in-depth. And honestly, I haven't completely covered everything that the Forest of Athalorn does to defend itself, to the point where I kind of want to do a second episode on it, but we'll have to see. For the moment, I think this one is good enough. Until next time, I have been Arch, thank you very much for watching, and I do hope to see you all again soon. Have a good day.